Okay. So friends, welcome back to Opus LNI, where we are nearly, kind of, almost done prepping for Gulf War. I have all of my packing lists refined to optimal efficiency, I have the schedule highlighted, we've got the communal meal planning all sorted, and thanks to sewing for this YouTube channel, I finally have enough 14th century clothes for a whole week of camping. I don't actually have any last minute projects to do. Or so I thought. If this was a year like any other, I'd be good, but we're switching it up a little bit. For every group that camps together, a couple of people go out before war opens on Saturday to do things like clear out any brush and lay out the camp configuration so everyone knows where their tents go. This year, partner and I are doing that for our camp, and while I have lots of garb, I don't have a lot of mundane working clothes, and I don't really want to be clearing brush and killing fire ant nests in long skirts. But I hate jeans, and I really don't want to spend money on a pair that I will wear once a year if I'm lucky. There is a solution though, pirate pants. I've been wanting to make a pair of Orlin's pirate pants for a while, and this is the perfect opportunity. They're relatively simple to make, so they shouldn't interfere with any last minute war related crises, of which there is usually at least one, and I'll make them in linen so they'll be nice and comfortable. Everyone grab your cuppa. Today, I am drinking Auntie Arwen's Highland Fling, which is a black Lapsang Souchong with heather buds in it, and it smells uh, just like the campfires I'm looking forward to at war. And since Auntie Arwen is a vendor, I can restock then. Let's get into it. Obviously, the first thing I'm going to need is the pattern. I used to hate printable patterns because I thought they were such a pain to print out and size correctly and trim and tape together, and they really are, honestly. But all of that doesn't stand a chance against my impatience, and when I get a wild idea to make a project, it's nice to be able to get started on it immediately. I've mentioned it before, but I really love frog tape for putting patterns together. It's a painter's tape that comes in different levels of stickiness. The yellow is delicate and it sticks nicely, but is easily repositioned when you inevitably tape the pattern together just a little bit off. I know, I know, another black linen garment. I do have reasons beyond aesthetics though. I have a lot of leftover linen from other projects that I want to use up, and black pants won't show stains or dirt badly at all. And of course, the aesthetics. In order to make sure that all of the pieces are on grain, I starched and ironed the linen before I started tracing. I don't want the pants to be twisted or skewed because they weren't cut square.
The instructions start off with sewing the pocket pieces together first, finishing the edges, and then inserting them into the side seams. To keep this project short and sweet, I am serging the seam allowances instead of felling them. And because I'm efficient, which is code for lazy, I'm not even switching out the thread color. The front pocket edge is finished by ironing the seam allowances toward the pocket and then stitching along the seam line in order to prevent the lining from rolling outward and showing the seam. It's a really professional looking finish. After the tops of the pockets are sewn to the waist seam allowance to keep them all together, the crotch seams can be sewn together. The pattern calls for French seams, but see above where I am lazy slash efficient and I just searched them instead. Next, the side seams will be searched separately and then sewn together, leaving the last three or so inches free. Then I can sew the ties and turn them right side out. Then I'll sew the inseams in one long seam, finishing them the same way. After sewing down the seam allowances of the remaining slit in the side seams, I'm going to fold the pant hems up about a quarter of an inch and hem them. Then I'll use my handy dandy pressing guide to make another fold one inch deep, ironing that as well. After that's sewn down, the pant legs are finished.
Thank you to all of my current and continuing Kofi members. Your support and the support of all of my members and croissants makes it easier to do what I do and to provide quality content for everyone. Thank you so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break to see the final construction steps. The waistband is sewn into a loop and marked for a later pinning. I will hem the other edge to make sewing the waist closed later easier. It's less work to pull out my modern machine than put the correct accessory onto the featherweight to run the gathering stitches along the waist of the pants. I'm using a zigzag stitch over crochet thread for this since it's nice and strong and easy to see whether I've accidentally sewn through it. I'll pin the seams to the markings on the waistband and gather the pants down to the correct length. This is the only step I wasn't really happy with. The gathers were weird and sloppy looking unless I paid very close attention while sewing because there just wasn't that big of a difference between the waistband and pant top lengths. That left the gathers looking sparse and anemic. Luckily, this will be hidden by the elasticized waist in the next step. I've measured and sewn the elastic together and am pinning the waistband closed over it rather than pinning and sewing and then running the elastic through. This is a purely personal preference. After it's all pinned, I'll whip stitch the band closed because I hate attempting to stitch in the ditch. And then all that's left is to run the ties through their casings.
Thanks for coming along with me this week. These pants are so comfy, I may never take them off. Though I am considering adding a drawstring to this pair just for extra stability if I put things in my pockets while I'm working. And then I may end up making another two or three pairs since I think they'd be perfect for spring and summer. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and of course, click the notification bell if that's your jam. If you want to find me on social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere, but the place you can find me most reliably is my Discord, which reached 400 members recently. So if you're interested in sewing or history or just a wonderfully supportive community, come and join us at the link in the description. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Whew.